The expectations and hype surrounding young prospects can oftentimes be a bit overwhelming. In the era of hoop mixtapes and highlight reels being readily available and updated daily, basketball players are being evaluated more closely and being declared the next great NBA player from very young ages. Not every player can live up to this hype, however, and oftentimes they don't come anywhere close to reaching the full potential people thought they had in them. Making it to the NBA is no longer an acceptable finish line for the top prospects. If they don't dominate the league right away, many label them as busts, which is incredibly unfair to the player. In many cases, it takes a few years for players to carve out roles on teams and contribute at a high level. For today's video, we're going to be discussing Nerlens Noel, who has had a bit of a rocky start to his NBA career, has been forgotten about by many, but why I believe he will turn things around and become a solid NBA player moving forward. Before I begin though, make sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a like naming any other players you think have been labeled busts too early that will turn things around that I should make a video about. Now with that being said, let's begin. Nerlens Noel became hyped up in the basketball scene very early, as he was the star of hoop mixtapes all throughout his high school career. At 6'11 with a 7'4 inch wingspan, he was a man amongst boys against his high school competition. He towered over them, dunked everything he touched in the paint, and swatted away every shot his opponents took at the rim. His length, along with his agility and quickness for someone his size, made scouts believe that he was oozing with potential. Pretty soon, Noel was climbing recruiting boards everywhere, and all of the top-tier colleges in the country were taking notice of his game. He was originally a member of the 2013 recruiting class, but was able to reclassify and go to college a year early as a member of the 2012 recruiting class. By doing so, he was immediately labeled the number one recruit in his class in the entire country. ESPN ranked him number one on their top 100 recruiting ranking, and Scout.com labeled him number one on their website's ranking as well. After this, he attracted offers from numerous top colleges, but Noel's final choice came down to three schools, Kentucky, Georgetown, and Syracuse. Kentucky was just coming off of a national championship win after Anthony Davis's dominant season. With Davis declared for the NBA though, Kentucky's center spot was open, and with the program's reputation of successfully getting one-and-done recruits drafted to the NBA, Noel ultimately committed to Kentucky. Coming off of a national championship, Kentucky fans and college basketball fans as a whole had lofty expectations for the team. The team had the number one recruiting class in the country, in big part because of the commitment of Noel. They were ranked the third best team in the preseason because of this. When the season began, Noel showed that his offensive game wasn't quite as polished as some may have expected, but his defensive prowess was as advertised and more. He dominated the glass, averaging 9.5 boards per game, and when it came to forcing turnovers, he was historically great for a college center. He averaged a whopping 4.4 blocks per game, and also averaged 2.1 steals per game, which is almost unheard of to do together. In fact, these averages are so unheard of that only one other player in college basketball history had averaged at least four blocks and two steals in a season, and no one in history had ever averaged 4.4 blocks and 2.1 steals per game in a season. Unfortunately though, Noel tore his ACL during the season after playing 24 games, which held him out the rest of the season. Kentucky was not able to recover from this loss, and they proceeded to lose quite a few games afterward, which led to them not even getting selected to play in March Madness. When the season ended, Noel declared for the draft, and despite his injury, he still had high hopes that he would be the number one pick in the draft. He had confidence in himself being the best prospect at the time, and many experts agreed that he should have been picked first. That, however, didn't happen, as the Cavaliers stunned the basketball world and selected Anthony Davis with the first pick. Noel's tumble continued for a few more picks before he was ultimately drafted by the Hornets, sixth overall. He was then traded to the 76ers for a point guard Drew Holiday as the Sixers began their infamous tank. Noel missed the entire 2013 season because of his ACL tear, as most Sixer rookies do nowadays, but he came back in 2014 looking like the player he was at Kentucky. 
His ability to rack up a good amount of blocks and assists per game translated to the NBA level, as he averaged 1.8 blocks and steals per game during his first two seasons. While he was doing well on a bad team and not necessarily contributing to many wins, his defensive production was still promising. Then though, when Embiid stepped into the spotlight, Noel basically became an afterthought in the Sixers' rotation. Rumors started to swirl that Noel was gaining a bit of an ego, wanting a bigger role, and wanting to be in the starting lineup. So after playing only 29 games of the team's first 56 that season, the Sixers granted his wish and sent him to Dallas where he hoped for an opportunity to shine. Again though, things didn't work out the way that Noel expected them to. After the season, he was a free agent and was pushing for big money, but no offers came. He settled for a one-year deal worth $4.1 million as a prove-it deal, but this past season was his worst as a pro so far. More rumors about him being a locker room problem have swirled, and he was in head coach Rick Carlisle's doghouse for a majority of the season, rarely being given an opportunity to play. That brings us up to date with how Noel's career has gone so far, being off to a decent start on a bad team, and then ultimately becoming a forgotten prospect on another bad team. So what makes me so confident that he's going to turn things around? Let's get right into it. To start, Noel has already shown that he can produce in the NBA. During his first two seasons with the Philadelphia 76ers, he was looking like a player that was on his way to developing into legitimate starting center that could make multiple all-defense teams in the future. The burden on his back those years was a lot more than he should have had to bear because the players around him were so bad. He never had a consistent group of teammates around him, with G League level talent funneling in and out of the rotation throughout those early years. Despite all of that, Noel was one of the most consistent positive factors on the team at the time. Despite only winning 18 games during his rookie season, the Sixers were ranked the 13th best defense in the league, which is above average, but specifically, with Noel on the floor with the team, they were actually the 6th best defense in the league, which is extra impressive when you consider who he was playing with at the time. Now, revisiting his steals and blocks per game numbers, Noel was actually the only player in the entire NBA to average at least 1.8 steals and 1.9 blocks per game during his rookie season. His unique ability to combine the two and create turn turnovers on the defensive end as a big man was one of the biggest reasons why he was seen as a potentially great defender down the line. His defense was never really the worry regarding Noel though, and that's not why I believe he can still become a very good player in the league. The biggest complaints around his game were that he was too skinny and that his offensive game was not very polished. To address the first issue, I do agree that he needs to put on some weight. Getting bullied by stronger big men is one of his weaknesses, but I don't necessarily believe that it is a game-breaking weakness for him. The concept of small ball has become all the craze lately, and very few teams in the league dominate from down low in the post. Pick and roll is one of the biggest staples of NBA offense, and that is something that Noel excels at on both offense and defense. Two seasons ago, which is the last season that he got consistent minutes for the Mavericks, Nerlens ranked in the 83rd percentile in pick and roll scoring as the role man. He uses his 6 foot 11 height and 7 foot 4 inch wingspan to his advantage, with his quick burst when he jumps also making him a deadly lob threat. Defensively, he ranked in the 71st percentile as the big defender in pick and rolls that season, which again is very good compared to the rest of the league. He's smart with his rotations, he hedges out, and has the agility to keep up with the constant movement by the opponents. Lastly, regarding his lack of an offensive repertoire, he will definitely never be a go-to scoring option, but that's fine. If you take a look around the league, many of the most successful centers in the league are in the same boat. Clint Capella thrives in the pick and roll and attacks the rim hard while rarely getting any paint touches with his back to the basket. The reigning defensive player of the year, Rudy Gobert, is the same way. He plays above the rim, gets to the right spots to crash the glass, and is always a lob threat. In Oklahoma City this upcoming season, Nerlens Noel will be coming off the bench as Steven Adams' backup. 
Adams can be a great player for Noel to learn from, because he has accepted his role and bought into the way the team wants to play better than a majority of players in the league. Playing with Russell Westbrook should also help rejuvenate Noel, and the Thunder are predicted to be a great defensive team this season. As long as Noel contributes to that and puts his ego aside, then I can absolutely see Noel helping a contending team succeed in a big way. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video and look out for more videos in the future. Thanks for watching and see you next video.